Hey folks, welcome back. So we're going to continue looking at UVs within Maya and how we can use and how we can use the process of UV mapping to line up textures to objects. What we want to do is put a texture of a food label onto this can. This scene is very simple really. It's just got the can shape itself on the top and the bottom of the can. And then there's a light within the scene and there's the ground itself, which is just the plane. I'm just going to pull up the attribute editor here. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a shader for our can. Now Lambert 1 is assigned by default and we don't want to use that shader. That is the shader that every object that gets created in Maya uses. So let's go and add another shader to our scene. So I'm just going to hit control and spacebar to exit full screen mode. And I'm going to go over to the rendering tab here and I'm going to assign a blend material which is just a standard type of material that ships with Maya. And you can see that a blend to has now been added onto this object and the object has changed color slightly. And if I just wanted to change the color of the can to, uh, to red, for example, I could do that just within the shader. This kind of adjustment to color doesn't require any UVs. But if I want to go and add an image onto the can, then I will need to click this little checker here and that's going to open up the create render node window and I'm going to click on file and it's going to load in a file node for me and I'm going to click on this little browser window and I can go and look for a texture to load into the scene and this is the texture that we are going to use in this case so I'm going to open this one up and you can see that the texture looks like it's been loaded in we can see a sample of it here in the little swatch but on our can here, it is not showing correctly. Now something has happened, it's turned pink, uh, but we're not seeing the texture in the way that we might expect. So ultimately the process of UE mapping is not very complicated. Um, I know that you, new users can find it a bit daunting uh, when they first come across this concept, but really what we are trying to do is tell Maya, where does this image, this texture that we've brought in, where does it go on the 3D model? And because we don't have uh, decent UVs on this can at the moment, Maya doesn't know what to do. So let's select the can and we can go and open up the UV editor. Now there's a couple of different ways to get to the UV editor and you can definitely go to Windows Modeling and UV Editor and it will pop up separately. But because I'm capturing the screen here, I'm going to change over to the UV editing workspace. And that's going to change my workspace around so that my UV editor is now docked. So that was just up here, UV editing. And if it doesn't look the same for you when you set it to UV editing, you could go reset current workspace and that should put it back to the default. Uh, here is the, uh, the can label and it's loaded into the background here. We're gonna use this as just kind of an introductory example really to the UV editor. And we can see there's lots of different buttons across here that we can go and look at. Um, the first thing to note is that the texture is showing in the background and usually you want that and it's this button here that turns the texture on and off and usually the grid is turned on as well. Now UVs are measured from 0 to 1. So this is called a 0 to 1 UV space and you can go 0 to 1 here and 0 to 1 here. And our texture is fitting inside that. Okay, now you can see that it's not showing on the can and that's actually because I deleted the UVs off of the can. So there's no UVs in here at the moment. So Let's take a look at how we could go about creating some UVs for our, uh, for our can here. And there's a, a few different default options. We have an automatic mode which will fire a projection from six different faces by default. Uh, we have a planar based mode, a spherical mode, and a cylindrical mode. And in this case, well, we've got a cylinder, so it's a fairly safe bet that the cylindrical mode is probably gonna do us okay. Um, so I'm just gonna click on that one. And you can see straight away that in this case, uh, it's been relatively effective right out of the bat. Uh, and we have some, U uh, we have some UVs now, and that's this UV shell that we're seeing in the UV editor. And we can see our texture in the 3D space. So that's some kind of success. We can see that our UVs at the moment are bigger than the texture. And what that means is that the texture here is going to repeat okay and you can see that we have a quick meal here and on the other side we have it as well and that's because 
although we're only seeing the texture within the zero to one space here by default it's going to repeat so if the shell if the uv shell i'm right clicking here to select the uv shell if it's outside of the zero to one space you can just imagine that this texture is repeating again and again and again across all these uh these squares so if we don't want it to repeat and we don't in this case we need to scale our uvs so i'm going to hit r in the uv editor and i'm just going to scale it in like this Okay, and now the UVs for this particular shape match up a little bit roughly, but match up to our texture. So we should find that the texture is applied once, so now we're not getting any repeat. And we'll also see that it's not stretched like it was before. So previously it was stretched out and you can see that this circular shape, for example, and, you, and the typeface looks incorrect. And as I scale it in the and as I scale the UVs to match the texture, it looks more correct. Okay, so that is the process of loading in a texture onto a shader, applying it onto an object and creating some UVs. Now this was an easy one to do in this case because, well, we have this cylindrical mapping and this is a cylinder. So now we need to go and look at some examples that are a little bit more complicated where an object would have multiple shapes and we need to try and map all of those multiple shapes together.